My name is Joseph Carter, and I am the Mink Man. When I was a senior in high school, I started learning about the American mink. I was told that mink were horrible, vicious little animals who were impossible to tame. Challenge accepted. I've been in love with mink ever since. I get mink from fur farms and give them a new life. In this new life, my mink live as naturally as possible, even hunting for their dinner the way a wild mink would. So come join me on my adventures as we learn more about this intense little predator, the amazing American mink. Oh, sorry, girl. They just get, they get nervous anytime anybody tries to touch them. They're so small, everything's a threat. Right. But she's gonna foot you. <laughs> so we are going hunting. My buddy Jeff here and his little falcon. Did you name her anything? Rosie. Rosie, little Miss Rosie. It's all look at her looking. She knows what we're doing. <laughs> she knows what we are doing. Rosie is an American kestrel. That's the smallest species of bird of prey in North America. So we're doing what's called car hawking. Drive around till we see a starling in a good position. At which point, little Miss Rosie there goes flying out the window and tries to catch it. And you look at her looking, she knows what's going on and she is anxious for us to find us find her a bird this is the kind of bird we're hoping to catch today the european starling as their name suggests they're originally native to various parts of europe as well as western asia they're a medium-sized bird roughly the size of an american robin starlings will happily eat everything from fruit to grain to insects and pretty much anything we would eat as well they're rather aggressive little birds and will crowd out or sometimes even kill other similarly sized birds they also reproduce very rapidly, which can create quite a problem since European starlings are listed as one of the top 10 most invasive species in the world. In addition to invading North and South America, they've also been introduced into other parts of the world like South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand just to name a few. In addition to the aforementioned damage they cause to native bird species, invasive starlings can also cause significant problems to humans by destroying crops. Okay. Starlings. Are we going on the, for the one in the field or on the side? One on the, in the field. And down on the grass. She, she's saying no? No, she's saying no. She well, says, we'll get, me a, a, get me a closer one. Sometimes, um, if we just make the round and she sees it again, she may go. I think sometimes she knows too if they're going to see her coming. If they face him a certain way. Uh -huh. So you just kind of let her decide, yeah. give her the opportunity. If she says no, then we keep driving. And how do you start her out like doing this? They'll do it um, if you give them an easy enough slip. You know, if there's a bird pretty close to the to her, you know, eventually she'll chase one and uh, she realizes that she can catch it. Once she realizes that she can catch it, she's, you know, chase them all. Now if you guys see those little leather straps on her legs, those are called Jesses. They are basically how he they want to keep a hold of her and he, so she doesn't fly at the wrong moment. There's birds up ahead. Oh, oh. Missed it. She overshot it. <laughs> oh man. Is she, is she going for another? Oh, oh she is for going for another. <laughs> oh, she's on it. Did she lose it or is she still yeah. on it? That was a kill that she tried to. Yeah, oh, she quit. She was on it for a second there. Getting her little snack. He feeds her a little tidbit of meat, a little tidbit of starling meat to get her to come back after the flight. And now we're off to go find another one. 
two more we're gonna try here. Rosie's anxious. Hold on, Rosie, hold on. Be patient. There's another st oh she lost it. It went in the bricks. It went in the bricks and she was trying to get it. Right. She's eating her little tidbit of meat. Kind of a little that's a little bone she was yeah, on. Little, little neck. Little neck bone. Hey, let's go find you more starlings, Rosie. Also, but I think they just key in on one that looks like you know an easy target to them. Nice it might not look like the same uh, target we think. You know? Yeah. They see one that's distracted or behind mm -hmm. something, so it won't see her approach. Right. And that's what they want—not necessarily a close one, but one that's distracted or <clears throat> for some reason unable to see the approach. Girl, good girl, Rosie. Good girl, Rosie. Good girl, Rosie. You got your starling. Oh, yeah, isn't that yummy? Oh, what a good girl. <laughs> Good girl, Rosie. You did it. So you're feeding her up? Yeah, well, because um, we gotta head back. And she'll eat, like, you can probably feed her two or three legs and she'll continue to hunt. Um, like she'll eat that and, and continue to hunt. Okay. But So if we see another slip, he'll give it to her? Yeah. We're not totally and, down, but we're mostly down. Yeah. And then if we don't see another one, I assume she'll need a little more than that yeah. for the night. Yeah. She'll need a couple yeah. more legs. You actually can kind of see it. A leg and a head. She sounds Christ. <laughs> That's a surprise. Good girl, Rosie. Should we see if we can get you another half? Huh? Living the life. You get to... <laughs> Eat meat and the safety of the car. You don't have to worry about a Cooper's Cooper Hawk coming to eat you while you're having your meal. Anyone who is against this is beyond ridiculous. You have no idea the, the luxuries and freedoms both this bird gets to enjoy. Most of these birds only live a couple of years because of accidents or a Cooper's hawk eats them or something eats them. They're both predator and prey. <clears throat> and so they typically live very short lives. Here in Falconry, they get a wonderful opportunity to be able to both hunt for their meal and have a big giant predator as a buddy, as a bodyguard takes them in nice safe places and they eat in the safety of the car instead of out there in the field where any moment a bigger bird of prey might drop on them and they're the next, they're the one being eaten. As many of you already know, I was a devoted falconer in my teens, but after several years of flying hawks, I began dreaming of experimenting with other wild predators. Predators who had no history of hunting with humans. Since that time, mink have occupied my life to the point where I have been unable to fly a hawk, as both pursuits are incredibly challenging and time-consuming. Someday I hope to find the time to do both falconry and minkinry, but if I'm forced to choose, I will stick to my mink. Though watching a bird of prey hunt is both magical and exhilarating, for me it isn't as satisfying as hunting and fishing with a mink. 
I enjoy lots of different kinds of hunting with animals, but so far mink have been my all-time favorite up to this point.